Hey, welcome to Electron Line. A couple of videos ago, when you go back to video number nine, we calculated the potential difference going from A to B for an infinite line charge using the Gaussian surface to calculate the electric field and then integrating from A to B through the electric field. Remember that the potential difference is simply the difference or moving through the electric field multiplied times the distance traveled. And when we did that, we got this as the answer. In the previous video, number 10, we calculated a potential difference going from A to B simply for a finite line charge where the length is 2L, L on this side, L on that side, and we're right there at the perpendicular bisector. And then we found out that the potential difference going from A to B is equal to this quantity right there. Notice that this quantity here is exactly the same as that quantity, but we have an additional term because we're dealing with a finite length. Now the question is, if we allow L to become larger, what will this term become? Notice as L becomes larger and larger, we have L plus the square root of B squared plus L squared. L will then be much, much bigger than B squared. And in the limit, in the limit, as L approaches infinity, we can say that the limit of this quantity right here, which is the square root of B squared plus L squared, will become as L becomes infinite, B then becomes insignificant, and so this will be equal to the square root of L squared, or better yet, I can go ahead and say that's the square root of infinity squared, which is equal to infinity. All right, the denominator is the same thing. We take the limit as L approaches infinity of the square root of A squared plus L squared, well, that becomes the square root of infinity squared, which is equal to infinity. And so then, what we can see then is that this whole quantity then, the limit, and I guess I should write it out like this, stay consistent, the limit as L approaches infinity of this quantity right here, of the natural log of, we write L plus the square root of B squared plus L squared, divided by L plus the square root of A squared plus L squared. When we apply the limit, we end up with infinity plus infinity divided by infinity plus infinity. Now you say, in the end, that of course is undefined, right? Infinity divided by infinity is undefined. And so actually, you go, okay, how do we deal with that? But let's take it one step backwards. Let's say, let's not plug in infinity, let's plug in a really big number. Let's plug, let's plug in a thousand, let's plug in a million, let's plug in a billion for L and see what we get. So if we do that, we get the natural log of, let's say, uh, 1,000 plus the square root of, let's say, let's say that B is, um, B is equal to 5 and A is equal to 10 in comparison. So let's plug those numbers in. So I end up with uh, 5 squared plus 1,000 squared divided by 1,000 plus the square root of 10 squared plus 1,000 squared. And then if we evaluate that number, you'll see that we get something that is very small, close to zero. Let's give it a try. So we have a million, 25, take the square root of that, plus 1,000. So we end up with, let me just write it in, the natural log of, uh, that would be 2,000, 0 0.0125 divided by, plug in the lower quantity, so we have a million, 100, take the square root of that, plus 1,000. Okay, so we have 2,000.0500. And let's take the natural log of that. Okay, so 2,000. 0 0.0125 divided by 2,000.05 equals, that's better, take the natural log of that, and we get, this is equal to minus 1.87 times 10 to the minus 5. Very tiny number. Now, if we continue that, if we now let L be a million instead of a thousand, then we get a number that is much, much smaller than that. If we make it a billion, it's much, much smaller. So you can see then in the limit, even though it appears to be undefined, in the limit, it becomes equal to zero. And this whole term right here simply drops out. 
and the answer converges to this answer right here. So it looks a little strange at first when you're purely mathematical and you're plugging the limits, you say, oh, wait a minute, I get infinity over infinity, that's undefined. But if you think about it from a physics perspective, because physicists are not as tight on the math uh, rules as the mathematicians, they can see that in the real world, you can see that this will converge to zero as you let L become larger and larger and larger. And all the way to the end, you can see that as you approach infinity, this quantity goes to zero, and the answer converges to the answer we had before, which means for an infinite line charge, the potential difference moving from point A to point B is equal to this quantity right there. And that's how we do that.